Welcome, everybody. This is the Free Thought Doctrine. I am Aaron Burr, recording out of San Diego, California. And I'm Blake Lincoln from the snowy fields of northern Minnesota. And I'd like to welcome a new addition to the show, Matt Franklin. Matt, if you want to say hello. I'm Matt Franklin. I'm in the uh, wonderful state of golden waves of gray or whatever, Kansas. All right. Um, so first thing I want to talk about is the fact that if you are watching this on YouTube, you see a video feed. And this is going to be a new feature we're going to have. For our YouTube subscribers, we will now do, we'll, we'll record our whole show and then uh, edit it down to shorter segments uh, for viewers to see on YouTube. And the entire audio feed will be available on Spotify for Spotify subscribers. So with that being said, on YouTube, please subscribe and like our video and uh, hit that little bell thing for the notifications to receive notifications for each uh, new video. Also on Spotify, please follow us on there too. That is much appreciated. All right, for our next topic, I wanna talk about the vision for the show. We've kind of talked about it before, uh, but I wanna expand on that a little bit. My vision for the show is to show the you know show people that you know certain principles of freedom uh liberty individualism um that those type of principles shouldn't be just segmented to only certain parts of society i think those are universal principles and that if we um you know bring up these issues talk about these principles and how they apply to different parts you know to different problems and solutions uh that we could create a consensus that will uh, create a better you know, reality for just about anybody. It doesn't matter where you come from or how you look, you know, it's all, it's all, they're just basic universal principles, you know, they inc you know, to include free speech, free thought. And I do, and I feel like those kind of principles are constantly under attack. And I'd like to, you know, display that one, put up a, a defense for those principles and to uh, you know, spread that message to the, to the people in general. That, that's, that's my vision for the show. Uh, Blake, what's yours? Well, going just by our title, the Free Thought Doctrine, um, to me it's all about free thought, whether you're right, left, or center. Um, everybody is an individual. Everybody has their own opinion. Um, and all opinions, I believe, are based somewhat off of different experiences. Everybody has different experiences in life that may draw them to different conclusions. That doesn't mean that that person is necessarily right in their opinion or wrong, but when you do have a disagreement or an idea that you know may not be popular or mainstream, that doesn't make it illegitimate. It should you should be able to discuss these ideas and those thoughts freely and maybe even challenge it a little bit to the point where you can realize that, hey, here's somebody that disagrees with me and I took some of his points, he took some of mine, and hopefully maybe we can come to a greater understanding and realize that, you know, a lot of us don't have as much, uh, we're not as against each other as we as we think we are. All right, I love that response, Blake. Uh, that's a great vision. Um, I totally agree with you there. Matt, what's, what's your vision for the show for to succeed? For the show to succeed? Well, I always talk about like, um, I uh, heard the speaker, he uh, talked about how to set, like make people go towards a goal. And he said, like, if you're in an empty room and you tell a person like head to that corner from here and they start walking, you put a chair in front of them, they'll walk around the chair and they'll get their, hit that goal. If you just say, hey, head anywhere and they start walking, you put a chair in front of them, they'll just either finish, kind of figure out oh, that's where I just need to be done or they'll just wander off in some other random direction and never, probably never even hit a goal. So, they all, so I believe that anytime you set upon doing something, you need to make like a goal that's not quite unattainable, but something that will take a great amount of effort and time and sacrifice to create. 
and that for it can be something that you're proud of because you'll know that you put in as much effort as you knew you could. And so I think ideally is if we could actually inspire and change people and get people talking and realize it's us, the people who have the power that we don't need to have to worry about people controlling us or leading us or saying that we have to do anything, but instead we don't need to be fed all this information that says that we're all so different and we're all so against each other because we voted one way or, or we believe something else that freedom is totally set forth by the individual. And as long as it does not harm anyone else or, or you do not infringe upon someone else's freedom, that you should be able to, in good conscience, control yourself and be able to be responsible for yourself and therefore do what you want to do without infringement from others because of what they may believe or may not believe is right. A very libertarian answer, and, and I love it. <laughs> Great, awesome. So with that being said, um, I think that in regards to everything we just talked about in terms of vision and you know freedom of the individual and all this stuff, I think that something that plays into that in our society, uh, in any country, including this one, is elections and the voting process. Um, obviously, we just went through a huge major uh, election, what, a month ago, right? And, you know, depending on your perspective, it was either amazing and great or was completely rigged and stolen or there was shenanigans that went down, but it is what it is or you know, what one extreme to the next, right? So my question is, what is the status of voting in elections in America today? And where do we stand? Where do we each, like the, of the three of us, where do we each stand on how the process works? Is, is there or was there mass election fraud or mass voter fraud in this last election? I, I think clearly from, I mean, for those of you who have listened to our past episodes, I think there was clearly uh, mass fraud going on um, in multiple areas of the country. Um, unfortunately, you have to be able to prove it. This stuff should have been fought, fought in courts months ago before the election. Now, I mean, it, it's way too late. Uh, Mail-in ball balloting to me is a huge, huge problem. Um, I mean, you had so many, so many illegitimate people voting, whether uh, I believe, what was it? Uh, I, I think in Michigan, they were documenting the amount of dead people that, that voted. They had like 14,000 or something like 14, that. 14, 1,500, something like that. I mean, there has to be a process. Everybody should should have has everybody in this country has the right to vote but it needs to be legitimized and so that your vote is counted and protected and with mail-in balloting and in the chaos that ensued because of the pandemic i i don't i'm not entirely sure that it was a, a legitimate process so, unfortunately. Uh, but before this election before 2020 so going to 2016 and back how did, how did you feel about the process then and in voting in this country? I was, I was still kind of skeptical about it before then. Like you hear about, I mean, like places like Chicago where, where voter, voter fraud is just, it's a business almost. <laughs> These people have it down to a silence. And from, I mean, I, I've stated before that um, because of the pandemic, uh, people were able to capitalize on on that kind of chaos. And I believe that was the intention uh, since day one of the, the pandemic. Well, not day one, but that was the plan they were using to, to get this accomplished was exactly what we, we uh, were discussing uh, in a different podcast where they, they were planning to make sure that uh, they were gonna use mail-in ballots to, to fix the election, whether or not you can prove it or not, I, I really don't know. But the fact that both Trump and Biden had, you know, broke the record for, for uh, voting uh, 
vote, just voting totals just it's a little bit suspicious to me. True. <laughs> True. So Matt, what's what's your uh, perspective on this? I agree uh, a bit with Blake. Like, I I agree that uh, if this election was rigged, then so pretty much have I believe that all most all other elections have been rigged in some way, shape, or form. Um, I I I was I didn't know about this particular subject that was going to be on tonight, but there were a few resources that I've looked up that yeah you know, talks about the electoral college and how some people say well everyone's vote is is worth something it's like not but it's not equal in every state because yeah if you did have the popular vote then it would be new york and california choosing every election so you can't say that a vote in california is worth as much as a vote in wyoming where there's far less population and they get more more voters than that so it, it is true yeah you're taking away from those two major population states but in fact you're actually putting into like kind of three midwestern and southern states you're making because like Aaron's vote in in uh, California is worth less than probably my vote is in Kansas because there's far less people out here but we have not as many uh, representatives as can as California does but we have a certain percentage that 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 count for those votes so well let me let me counter a little bit here so I would say when it comes to elect electoral college it's it's looking at the big picture of time right like mm -hmm. you know you take a snapshot and it doesn't really kind of doesn't really give you the 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 overall of why the system's set up because the, the point is over time as election cycles go through and different you know uh parties and stuff and they you know what through whatever means uh sway different states and different directions could take years I mean, just, yeah. just look at the landscape now. Yeah. My vote is actually... Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, the only way that you're going to be able to prove that all this is wrong is if somehow all of us had an ability to, like, turn a light bulb above our head that's shown a certain color, and then you could take a picture from space and say, here's actually what the country looks like. And if it looks more red or more blue, then you give it to that per person, right? I mean, because well, no, unless we have something visual or something, because like, no one, there's no one person who's possibly that anyone's going to give them that that credit, cred, cred, that those credentials that says like, oh, we trust you. No, there's not enough people in this country that will find one person they trust in that much. So, so, you, I'm, so, so I'm just saying the, there's only the only way that you're going to be able to prove any election that has been completely rigged from the past. Mm -hmm. is if you talked to almost every single person made sure that their vote was in that thing and then you had a perspective that everyone could see somehow that shows like yes this person did win because he had this many more people in the country but once again that goes back to the pop to the to the uh electoral college like that'll just say like that california and it'll just go to the democrat you guys pretty much agree right new, new york and would. Yeah, uh, of course. i would i would say there are ways to verify elections uh for example uh voter id laws which for some reason democrats don't like very much they claim that they're racist i don't believe they are i think that would be an excellent way to to verify uh somebody's vote and make make things uh on the up and up uh, Oh, what else? Uh, I, yeah, just any you, kind of verification for voter ID. Uh, I really think there needs to be some sort of reform uh, and on that front, just just for everybody's sake, not what what your party politics are, but it has to be, there has to be something done to make sure that the process is legitimized for everybody's sakes, no matter where you stand on any issue. We have to have free and fair elections. Otherwise, you know, we're living, we're living in a banana republic and, and you know, and you don't want, uh, you don't want people thinking that the whole country is illegitimate. You have to, you have to find a way to make sure that everybody's vote is counted now whether or not they they being politicians and the people in power actually want to come up with a process that involves those type of things is 
I, I think for the future, there has to be some sort of uh, change to voter ID laws. Let me throw a curveball at you guys right now. So we're talking about rigged elections and, you know, at least a possibility and how to prevent that in the future. And I agree that free, fair, and legitimate elections should always be the case, right? I don't know who in their right mind would argue against that. However, let me throw this at you. And I first I'll relate it to the mass mail-in, uh, you know, voting situation, right? So obviously I'm not against absentee voting, right? Because that's where you get a ballot. It's verified on each side. I'm talking about when you just send out, I've talked about this before, you just send out a massive list or a, a massive amount of ballots. So just a, a list of registered voters. And it doesn't matter if they moved three, four times, left the state, died, whatever, right? Mm. That's why you get this massive influx of um, ballots. Now, what I propose goes before 2020, right? What, what I'm about to say, and I know this could be very controversial in today's society. Because <laughs> what I'm saying is, and, I, and I'm, what I'm also, and when I say this, I'm responding to an argument I've heard in the past from a very liberal friend of mine, right? Because his, so I'll start off saying what his argument was. He was saying that politicians in power, and he was really kind of pointing at, at the right, like Republicans, but politicians in power want to reduce the amount of voters, right? They want less, and that's why they come out so hard against uh, voter ID, right? Because they want maximum participation. Mm -hmm. Citizen, non-citizen, they don't care. They want massive. That's what's so, or excuse me, they don't want that. They don't want massive voting, right? Um, yeah. You know, there's, there's someone arguing from, you know, kind of pointing at the right, like, oh, you know, the right Republicans, like they don't want uh, more voters. They want less, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah exactly. So hold on. So what I'm saying is, <laughs> I agree. With, I agree with what he's, he's, so I agree with his accusation, but I, like, I'm not arguing against his accusation. Like, okay, true. It's like, true. You want right. less voters. I want less voters. <laughs> exactly. That's what you're saying. Yeah. I, what I'm saying is I want less voters and why, right? It, okay. The question to well. me is why. So the reason I want less voters is because I want informed voters making educated decisions based on facts and logic, right? I don't want these emotional voting patterns based on, I want more free stuff. I want more hands. Cause I think the, the, the moment that the people realize and that they probably already have that they can just vote themselves free stuff, regardless of other consequences, they don't think beyond, I just want free stuff, whether that free stuff be physical thing like materials, massive government programs, payouts, whatever, right? Once, they, once they're like, oh, I can just vote in for the process to get free whatever, right? It, you're going to the lowest common denominator at this point, right? And to me, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like the democracy versus, you know, the constitutional republic argument, right? It's, or, you know, direct democracy versus a representative republic argument where you get all these people in completely uninformed. And here's the thing, if you're not informed, if you don't know what's going on and you're not voting based off principles and, you know, beliefs based on philosophies and, and science or whatever, I don't want you to vote. I don't want you to vote, right? I hate that. Oh, go vote, go vote, go vote, which they always literally mean to the people who I'll say nine times out of 10, the people will say that they're saying, go vote for Democrats, go vote, go vote. LeBron James, go vote, go. He's, ta he's talking about one segment of society, right? Yeah. He's right. Right. That's, but that's, I mean, you, that, that is their right to vote. Nobody, I mean, you can't deny anybody. I'm not saying deny. I'm just saying, if you're not informed, don't vote, like do the country a favor. Right. right? And yeah, you know, I, okay. I, That's but, is, but would you have the same argument to say, okay, if you don't want to work, go die? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, depending on, uh, no, but if there's a certain reason, right? Because you could, um, uh, there's exceptions to every rule, right? I see what you're saying, but if it's, I don't want to, I don't want to work because I simply don't want to work because I'm lazy and I just want free shit, then sure. Right now, if it's because I have an illness, because I have these certain things. No, no, no. Yeah, life. obviously, if you have an excuse, like this, this is just very blanket, black <laughs> and white question here. Yeah. You'd rather people die than them not working if they are capable to work. As long as, this, it, it's, it's more of a situational uh, mind thing, right? Like, 
if they're just like, hey, I just want free stuff from society and I want to do nothing, I'm fully capable of no illness going on, no family situation, whatever, then sure. I mean, I'm not saying I want them to, but I'm just saying if it came to those two extremes, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but okay. What about somebody who's doing something to hurt society? What do you, we'll, we'll like they, they have a job, but they are like, uh, fraudulent being fraudulent. Yeah. Or, or yeah. Or among other things, there's a lot of ways in our society where you can be a piece of shit person and make a lot of money. Well, I mean, it just depends on what the situation. If it's something that's against the law, okay, then I want the law to down on I mean, uh, uh, child, child, uh, tra uh, Sex traffickers. What's the question? Like, sex what about traffickers. It? Like, I want them. That, I want... Would you rather people? Would you rather sex traffickers die than do their jobs or exist? Really? I mean, to me, it's not a matter of dying, but I would like the legal process to go in effect and whatever but wouldn't consequences that just cost are deemed money? by. Huh? Wouldn't that just cost money? Well, certain things are probably I'm worth, just, worth I'm just, spending I'm just money on. Location is good. All of us have a different perception of what, like, obviously, I believe doctors are a good job, and I think they are compensated well enough, and among a lot of other industries, but at what, where do we draw the line? Like, I understand the legal industries and the illegal industries, but there are some illegal industries, like, I, the only laws I agree with are ones that affect our freedoms and our safety. Of course. Like, I don't agree that, like, yeah, even though you have the freedom to, you should buy a nuclear bomb online, detonate, detonate it over your 50 acres of property or anything like that. But, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, I, the percentage of people that would argue that was, was very tiny. You know, right? you, like, I, now, people will use that and blanket other people with that and attack yes. him is kind of a psyop type of thing. But in reality, the, per the percentage of people that would make that kind of argument is, is, is minute, right? Like, that, that's not a reasonable thing that most reasonable people and rational, you know, rational people will argue. I really, just, uh, I think the media paints us all out to be a bunch of morons who go to like to the r most ridiculous ends and like are riding in the street over like toilet paper. I mean, <laughs> that's what you saw all summer, right? Like the yeah, shit, we're out well, of toilet paper. To play off, God, to play off what, what Matt just said, uh, mm -hmm. to go back on topic, uh, for example, you want to talk about how they, they view us all as a bunch of morons. Well, I believe that's intentional. You go back, look at the education system. Do you think they even teach civics in, in school anymore, K through 12? Yeah. That's, that's the real problem here is you can say that you shouldn't vote because you, you know, you're clueless or you don't know what's going on. But for a lot of uh, people, younger kids especially, it's really not their fault because they haven't been taught about the Constitution. They haven't been taught about the Bill of Rights. It's hardly even discussed in schools anymore. You can't even say the Pledge of Allegiance before class anymore. I mean, the level of, of detail that they've gone into to wipe American history and civics out of, you know, classrooms is, to me, the major problem when it comes to uh, getting an informed electorate. It all starts with education, and they've been they've been molding these these voters for years. And I believe that was one of the major things that I would say that uh, libertarians and conservatives uh, made was they they gave up the school system to the left, and we are reaping the repercussions of that now. So that's, oh, that's just my thought. I think, I think a lot of this, you know, yeah, they might think we're a bunch of morons, but honestly, there are probably not, not intentionally, but there are probably a, a fair amount of people in this country that I, I would argue younger people, uh, they just, they haven't been taught it. They don't know. And they, how would they learn anyway, unless somebody were to sit them down and say, hey, this is your country's history. Hey, these are your laws. These are your rights. I mean, where that would be the real issue is like, where do you start with that? How, how do you inform people of the rights that they do have instead of just willingly accepting uh, whatever the media or politicians tell them? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that. For sure.
But I guess what I'm saying is, regardless, if you as a person, I mean, I, I, the three of us, I can almost guarantee went through the exact same school system. You know what I'm saying? Like the system you just described, we went through that system. Yet we sit here with free open minds, right? Like we, we get educated and informed, right? Yeah, but I mean, when we went in an, school, it, not even, an excuse. it was. And the, the people you're talking about, the people you're talking about, uh, you know, the, the younger, younger people, they're not the ones that determine this election or even last, right? It's, it's the people in our age group and higher that like really made a difference in the last couple elections, right? So it's well, not like so. the people you're talking about, that they've been, they've had a minimal effect. You know, it, it's, it's suburban Suburban people, like they use the term suburban housewives and stuff like that. Like those are right. like a huge portion of the vote, right? So those people went through the same school system that we went through, yet we have educated ourselves and informed, right. we make informed decisions, do, do we not? So what That's I'm saying right. is why do we give excuses to all these other people when we went to the same exact school system? It's, again, uh, a lot of people, a lot of uh, average Americans, they, you know, a lot of people don't get the luxury of going to higher education. A lot of people, you know, they, they, if they get through a high school, they're lucky to, you know, they, they get their nine to five job and they're all yeah, about, but Blake, life, right? Right. they're not thinking about voting. Right. I'm just telling you. But, but Blake, what I'm saying is a lot of the, we went through the same higher education things. Well, we made a choice. The in, That's in, the bottom in, line is we made a choice. Yeah. And I'm, I'm lucky to say for myself, like I uh, was around people when I was growing up that, uh, that were very involved in, in, in politics and things like that. But quite honestly, uh, I really got in, involved with uh, all of these different issues in my my understanding of everything because I just had a basic interest in American history. Uh, I can't even recall the minute that it happened, but I just, I got a spark that just said, Hey, this kind of seems interesting. And I want to, I want to learn more about this. And I, I see what you're saying, but I think all three of us made a choice, but not everybody's going to make that choice. And I'm not sure that you can force everybody to make that choice. Yeah, obviously you can't force everybody to make that choice. So what do you guys think? We'll start with Matt. If you even agree with the premise in the first place, what, what would, uh, well, what do you think is your solution I, to the problem? I guess is what I'm saying. Solutions to the problem is obviously yeah. education and a willingness to receive that education. Like you can't like, even if they were to like, transform it into like an elective which is sad because it used to be a requirement when we went to high school but they did say that around 95 is when the when the schools basically handed over all their curriculum to be government mandated so you had this uniform across the board this is what it's going to be i think it was like the no child left behind thing or kind of right in oh, that area thousands okay so but here, here's my question though is we're saying they needed to they need to make how do we make they well, um, we got to put more money into educational programs. So your that, solution is more money. That's true. It is more money. But uh, I believe like, like, because I disagree with if you. There either. was a m wider mass of people educated there. And would you be against them voting? Like, even if they voted, like maybe for their own demise, they're like, yeah, we need more social programs, even though I've gone, I got my doctorate and I go to the, like, like all this other no, stuff. No, because I don't equate, that's what I'm saying. I don't equate, uh, you know, getting your doctorate with being an informed, educated voter. Yeah, true. You know but saying? let's say they were doing, like, let's say they followed pretty much the exact path that you're taking. Mm -hmm. Let's say they vote differently than you, like, and like, let's say they voted for Biden this time. How, how would you have felt like, you're like, geez, you went through everything. What are you thinking? Like, I'm just curious I mean, what it is what it is you know what i mean I'm, it is what it is and that's the scary thing is yeah. is that's the problem is but here but here's the thing is i guarantee you all right so here's the thing if 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 i were to engage if i were to walk down the street all right and bump into the average person all right the average, the average joe the okay. average joe on the street like walking around and then i was like hey and we did have a civil discussion on who we voted for and they gave me 
legit reasons, even if it was legit to them, even if I was like, okay, whatever, but like a logical setup, boom, boom, boom. Hey, this is why I voted for this person. Cool. But if they start talking and it's obviously have no idea what they're talking about and they're just repeating talking yeah. points in the media, mm-hmm. then I'm going to be like, okay, this person's obviously not informed. He's not educated. He's just following whatever the popular thing is on, on TV to say. Yeah. And, and there's plenty of man on the street videos. There's hundreds of them, thousands of them of what I'm talking about. Right. You can easily find them on YouTube or Google. Yeah, I can Google. splice some in right here. Yeah. You can splice some in right here. A bunch of them where it's obvious that these people aren't educated. It could be college level, especially the college level people, but even just normal people. I mean, like Jimmy Kimmel and one of the other late night shows did this stuff decades ago. Right. Yeah. The same Letterman, thing. Like man on the street or yeah. even uh, David Letterman. David Letterman, yeah, exactly. So it's not even like it had, again, obviously these college students are in exactly what, you know, Blake was talking about, but you could go back like 20 years and there's people that are doing the same thing, right? I don't, look, I don't judge, I said this before, I don't judge you on who you voted for. I'm not going to treat you differently. It's not the who. It's the why. It might be the why, right? And even then I'm not saying I'll treat you bad, but I'm just, it might change my judgment of you, right? If you start giving me very uneducated reasons, like... Don't cross air in a dark alley. Who'd you vote for? (laughs) (laughs) But I'm just saying, if you get, you know, it it just comes down to reasons. People have different political viewpoints and stuff, right? That are legit, right? There's a left and right and a center and different degrees, different degrees of libertarians for a reason, right? Everybody has their their reasons. And I don't mind coming up against someone who completely disagrees with me and votes for the complete opposite thing if they have their reasons. Now... I'm all about trying to poke out, you know, holes in their arguments as, as such as I would expect them to do with me, not turn out, you know, hyper, hyper attack. Right. But that's how I see it. Yeah. No, I, I just thought of a funny scenario where you're talking to a person, you're poking holes in their reasons and they're like, well, shit, I already voted. Oh, well. And they walk away and you just be like, <laughs> <laughs> I could have had him if I got him before the election. <laughs> you know, so a professor once said to me, Right. And I was in a, uh, a class and it was a very, very far left professor. Yeah, I don't know about far, far, but you know, he's obviously on that persuasion of things. Uh, he was a, uh, he actually passed away in the last year. So, you know, may he rest in peace. But um, one of the, the greatest things I guess he said to me was um, you may not change someone in their viewpoint. Like, so it was in a class it was about editorial writing, right. You know, right. Writing commentary. Um, you know, you may not like change someone's opinion and change their mind or convert them. But if at least for one second, you could break their confidence, then you won. And that's all sometimes that's all I'm not asking to convert you, right? Okay, but if I could break I, your confidence for one second, make you question your thoughts, make you question your thought. And you know, and sometimes it happens to me. I mean, we're all human beings, we're all susceptible to that kind of thing. Um, and that's, that's happened to me. And I hopefully I've done that to others. Yeah, right. I hope that I uh, admit when I'm wrong and conceive to other arguments where I think everyone else is an idiot but me. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I agree with Blake in a certain sense that we've been dumbing down the country by taking, siphoning off a lot. Like, you're, you're right. I think there's a lot of waste in per- basically all areas of government. Mm-hmm. but I think we are all deserved of a decent public education, at least to some standard. It, it shouldn't have to be that the only valued education in this country is through private education because not everyone can afford that. And I'm sh- pretty sure well, that I mean, we could go into arguments about school choice, but here's one thing, cause you, I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring this up and I want, I want to know what Blake's take, take yeah. on this. So you mentioned that, that one solution to fix this would be more money, more funding. Blake, do you agree with that? Well, my point was going to be, I mean, from what I stated earlier, I mean, the right has, has ignored the education system for years. They've never wanted to support programs for education. It's always, you know, that's always an automatic no. So what's happened? It, look, this is why we're, where we're at is because of the neglect of the education system. Uh, a great example of that is uh, the 1619 project. I don't know if you guys are aware of that, where they're literally teaching, you know, American history, you know, since 1619. It's always been, you know, it's always been racist, and they're they're putting that in in public schools. And I'm saying, yeah, maybe there has to be some money towards 
uh, public education, if it was for the right intentions of teaching actual legitimate American civics, just basic government and law, um, I would support that because these people have to be challenged. Like you, the amount of stuff that they're just putting in public schools is becoming a major problem and it has to stop. I, I completely agree with the discussion you two were having about, um, you know, challenging each other's opinions and, you know, believing what you believe. But I, I agree with as long as you're informed. And, and all I'm saying is that should, I, I believe there should be public, some sort of public funding because nothing else is being done at this point. If we can at least teach kids basic, basic government and law, not, not politics, but basic government and law, the constitution and the way the country is set up, then children will be able to grow into young adults making more informed decisions on what they want to vote for. I disagree with both of you on the funding because what you're saying is the same people running these schools and the same teachers, and the same unions, the same overly bureaucratic system that is teaching these kids the things they're teaching them and not teaching them, hey, let's give those guys more money. I don't think that's the answer. If anything, we need to threaten them with cutting funding. We need to help hold, we need to give them incentives and disincentives to move in the right direction. We need them to fire entire school boards, school administrations, rid, them, rid themselves of school unions, whatever it needs to be to wipe out and clean the whole, the whole uh, slate and start over and re, you know, get, get the right, like hire the right people to hire the right people, right? And it doesn't have to be political, but like hire the right people that will change and put these classes and, and these lessons into effect, just like the, the stuff you're talking about, right? It doesn't have to be political. Right. But the problem is the system is corrupt and overly bureaucratic. Totally and you have is. tentacles it's... running it. And you're saying, hey, give these tentacles more money. No, it's so, that, oh, yeah, maybe we'll uh, agree what they say. Sure. No, no. They need to be wiped out. Right? The reason is that's that's the teachers unions. Look, that's, I agree. The, only, it's a lot that's of the only reason. Even uh, even the CDC and Dr. Fauci say that schools should be reopened. They're not. Do you know why? Teachers unions. Exactly. But, uh, to play off your other point about you know we, we shouldn't have any funding. I believe even even President Trump has signed legislation to promote a more patriotic patriotic education for. For students, is that correct? Is that something I okay. so it is, that did happen? But, remember. But, but that did happen. But again, schools are run by you know local boards, right? Local school boards. They're the ones who like dictate what's going on. Right. Yeah, the other unions play a role there too. It's kind of like a dual thing. But, but at the at the national level, you can only do so much, right? It's a lot of it's the unions and national. bureaucracies that are in place right now. The, the things, national level has a lot more power than you think. That's why kids are learning common core math. It's, it's, I'm not saying they don't, but I, I, I call to abolish the, the Department of Education. So when <laughs> I say cut funding, that's what I mean. I mean let's get rid of the, 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 the Department of Education, which used to be a very libertarian and conservative thing that they kind of gave up on for years. In the, uh, the late 70s, 80s, early uh, the think, 90s. That was a thing that, that, that uh, Republicans and libertarians ran on was to, to abolish yeah. the but, you know, Reagan even said that, right? It never uh, happened. That was and the Reagan's opposite happened. Thing. What Reagan happened? Yeah, said it was Reagan's was... huge thing. And then Bush came in and he had no child left behind and only gave him incredible, incredibly much more power, right? It did the opposite effect. It blew the bureaucracy up even stronger. And that's the thing. And that's one thing that Reagan used to say too. The bureaucracy only fights for the bureaucracy to make it bigger, stronger. And that's exactly what happened. Well, that's the course, and that can play back to what this topic was all about in the first place, is being informed, and we we're talking about voter fraud, and that statement that you just made wraps it up. The bureaucracy <laughs> only supports the bureaucracy to make it stronger. That's why That's why they cheat. It, it, they're in it for themselves. These people are making millions of dollars, if not millions, thousands of dollars. It's the only profession where you can go in, you know, making, you know, nothing and coming out a millionaire. It's, it's unbelievable. But that last statement you made 
just it wraps it up it supports itself it's and it's, whether you that that's got to come down to the bottom line is how do we fight that because it's a big big swamp so speaking of swamp right we can make the argument that you know the swamp won the election right you, you can make that argument the swamp won the election based on what you're saying rigging and, and all the stuff so say the, you know say the swamps candidates which in my in my opinion the swamps candidates were was biden and kamala all right say that it all goes through in what two weeks three weeks from now right? yeah or yeah well like when when the, when the votes come in or whatever when the final votes come in yeah. so that would make it a biden kamala presidency will it remain a biden kamala presidency yeah. <laughs> that's my question well, to both of you. uh we all know that i guess if you don't mind matt I'll, I'll go first and then i'll let you but i do believe that the president elect um had an interview with cnn uh what was it on thursday and they asked him they're asking him you know softball questions like they always do about his cat. One right? of the one of the questions was, "What what happens if you and Kamala uh, ever yeah. have a disagreement?" And his response was so bizarre. He said, "Oh, I'll just develop some disease and say I have to resign." I mean, how? <laughs> what a bizarre <laughs> thing to say. You know, and people are already wondering about that. Like, so, so what he said was, uh, he, he essentially didn't say that, but what he was saying was he was referring to when him and Obama were in the presidency, right? They were, he was saying that, oh, we used to have disagreements all the time or something. And that was really weird. I mean, it probably was a Freudian slip, what you're saying, but I think he was trying to relate it. it was, I think he was trying to relate it to the, when he was vice president with Obama and trying to relate that situation to this situation, but it came out weird. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess so. But if, uh, but it's <laughs> just a weird thing to say, it really is. Uh, but this is a guy who we're all aware makes lots of weird statements. So I, I, I was just really taken aback by that. Like, why, why do you say something like that? You're gonna be, you're gonna be the most powerful person in the country. Wouldn't she be the one to go? Like, why? It's just. I don't see that again. I don't know if he realized he was saying that. <laughs> Matt, I just you, feel like this is okay, so. this is just for me, like uh, Obama and Biden. Like I just feel like Obama's making the decisions, and then if if Biden tried to fight Obama on anything, Obama would just be like, "Here, Joe, go go play with this <laughs> and go toss it in the corner." I just I I don't think uh, any more that. Joe Biden, he used to be a, you know, capable politician. I mean, he's lasted in that town for years. I just... You don't think he's all there? I don't think he's all there. And that's not, that's not meant as a, as a personal attack. It's, it's, it's based on what I've seen. The guy just seems um, off. Like I, my own grandfather uh, on my father's side suffered from uh, dementia in his later years and it just I I'm not saying he has dementia but there's something something off in his cognitive process where I I would be surprised if he made it through four years all right I understand um before I say my piece Matt if you want to throw your two cents in there I think yeah somebody's gonna take him out and everyone's gonna blame Camilla but they'll be like oh well maybe it wasn't <laughs> and it will pass us by like a transition fade in a star or like a, a shape fade in a Star Wars movie we'll be like what oh <laughs> and we'll just continue on and be like okay that just happened all right well that may very well take place the way I see it is that this was planned from the very beginning right the, the puppet masters at, at that be Yep. Make this like Kamala, she, her campaign when she was running for president failed miserably. She ran out of money, and right before the first primary, she, she resigned her whole campaign before a single vote had taken place because she wasn't the odds were she wasn't going to take 
Amy so she was the first one to drop out, wasn't she? Was she was the first she one to drop out. And, and she my didn't even get she didn't even get one percent of the vote. Yeah, exactly. So I believe that the powers that be wanted Kamala to run and you know to run and win in the first place. Because if you look at her voting record in the Senate, she has the most liberal out of all the senators, she has the most liberal voting record. And she says some pretty extreme things. We could we could go through that one day, just all her things she said, things she stands for. She came out with a video right before the election. It was basically as, as far to the left as you can get in, in politics these days in America. It, you know, it, was, it was essentially hardcore socialism. If, if you watch the video, it was like a campaign video. So they knew, the, the powers that be knew that there was no way in hell that uh, Kamala would win the election, right? That would, she would have been destroyed if she was somehow to have to, you know, been pushed through, yeah. through whatever means to be the candidate, she would have been, she would have been crushed. So I mean, she was a sneaker candidate. They got her in, you know, they put her in with Biden on purpose. And then about in October, so uh, mid to late October, Nancy Pelosi came out and started talking about the 25th Amendment. And those of you who are not aware or familiar with the 25th Amendment, that's a means that they passed if a president is going through some kind of cognitive decline, the cabinet, you know, could come up and they basically send a letter to the Senate saying, hey, the president can no longer function in his duties excuse me, and then he, you know, he's, he needs to be removed, and he will be removed, and then the president has X amount of time, I think it's 30 days or 90 days, to send another letter to the Senate saying, no, I'm good, and then they vote on it or whatever. But she started, she brought up the 25th Amendment process and even mentioned that she wasn't even necessarily talking about it. She straight up said, you know, this is not, this, this doesn't have to necessarily even be about Trump. She was more about the a process in the future. So I think this was all planned out in that either at some point, I'd give it about one to two years, probably before the next uh, election, the uh, midterm elections, that either they will invoke the 25th or they'll just talk him into stepping down due to health reasons. That's what it I It would understand. be after the midterms, I think, because- Before, well, maybe shortly after, but- If you, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. It's, uh, if you look at her past too, she's she's on the Soros payroll. Uh, she She's all all for any program, uh that's that george soros has been behind she has been she is backed 100 percent in california well i mean she's yeah, a product so, of california which is yeah. one party rule anyways yeah right so she never had to face a challenging moment in her career at all so yeah no i agree um, with what you're saying it's and and again biden and we'll get to matt uh i just again going with what you said and what what i said previously like they're taking advantage of Biden, really. They're just, they're, he's like a, he's just a vessel to, to promote their agenda. That's what I believe. All right, Blake, you were talking about the interview last Thursday where the, you know, where Biden was in, a, in an interview and they're asking him softball questions, so on and so forth. And basically you see a preview of what the next four years is going to look like if they do take office right it's going to be you know one-sided um how great they are basically a, a, basically a version of a, what it was before trump with obama for eight years right um what is your opinion on the press and the you know the media and the mainstream media it, do, do you so i see them as trump made the statement enemy of the people and a lot of people were offended by that but i've always agreed with that um, I used to wear a hat that said the press is the enemy on top of it. And uh, so I've always felt that way that, the, that especially during these last four years, they, you know, the mainstream press was essentially an appendage of the Democrat, the Democratic Party. That's my opinion. How, how do you see it? Well, yeah, I would argue that we don't even have a media anymore. It's, it's propaganda. Uh, there, you're going to see a drastic change uh, now. You, you, I know it seems like a, a lifetime ago, but you remember how the the media treated Barack Obama for eight years? Like, absolutely, he could do no wrong. He walked on water. His, you know, he could probably go commit some sort of a crime somewhere and the media would probably find a way to explain it or cover it up with some some matter and then you come to Trump and it was a complete 
180 is this the most negative i mean day after day just non-stop non-stop trashing trump and to me it's it, that's that's not a free and fair press a free and fair press would be taking all all politicians and holding them all accountable not just the ones you agree with yeah sure okay so trump said something stupid fine absolutely question on him say question him on it and say why did you say this allow him to explain himself and then report it but i mean they just we don't have a a, a, a fair media anymore and that that's a real problem for free speech and it's a major problem for free thought because the press is what keeps or what used to keep the people in power honest and now in a lot of ways to me it seems like the media controls the politicians like they're they're in the driver's seat and these people are just really spouting whatever you know uh Zucker on CNN or wherever else, whatever they want to say, because they're that's their easiest way to make money and uh, make ratings. It's really unfortunate. And I know with Trump, he made it really personal with the media from the big beginning. And so that probably spiraled out of control. But even before Trump, it's it's been like this for for Decades. Just look at the way they treated George W. Bush. They hated Ronald Reagan. The media is slanted to the left, whether you want to admit it to, or not. It it is another arm. To me, it's another arm of the Democrat Party, and that's got to change. You have to have, like we were talking about the education system. The same thing applies with the media. You have to have a fair and free press to get actual truthful information out so people can make informed decisions. It's as simple as that. Matt, do you have a different opinion on this? Well, I think we do have a fair and free press. Nobody watches it. It's called PBS. It's funded <laughs> by the people, really. They don't answer to anybody. I mean, I don't know about PBS corporate. I've never worked for them, but I do a show that I try to keep, keep it just from my perspective. I admit that I'm not a journalist but I interview people that are in the field doing what they do that are professionals and I try not to take any sides on it. And yeah, I see a lot of skewing on every media format except, well, even including some others, but including PBS, there is certain aspects of it, but, but there's a certain aspect that isn't like they're the closest you're going to get and nobody watches them because they figure they're either too liberal or too conservative because I've heard both sides. And so the problem is, is like what people want to watch is they want to hear things confirming what they believe. Definitely. And so they're choosing what they want that won't make them have to kind of fight with themselves or their emotions or their mentality internally. So they fight against what might be good for themselves. You have a I would, to yeah. Um, I agree with a lot of that. I would, I would, argue with uh not notwithstanding pbs but i'm i'm talking more of like i would say major made the major corporations cnn msnbc the, the people that are you know they've got heavy heavy backing they're the ones that really have the power and sway and they're the ones um calling guys, the shots you but, guys were, you're, are about as old as i am so like you guys remember a time when there were the three, like, or five stations before Fox, there was like ABC, NBC, CBS, and PBS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now you're saying they don't even rank up there. When no, and, and, and to go on that, look at, look at what these stations, I mean, if you were to, and, and this is something they all have in common, whether it's Fox or CNN or whoever, uh, if you were to turn on their channel right now, I bet I could, I could flip on Fox right now and you're not going to get to you're not going to get a news anchor on there reporting about current events or news you're going to see two people yelling at each other that's all it is it's people and it's not even a civil debate it's people yelling and screaming over each other and if that's not a, a reflection of 
what's going on nationwide. I don't know what is. Um, it's and to me, it's it's not even news really. They're more just it's a lot of it's propaganda, but a lot of it too is just that these people they don't think themselves as journalists. They think themselves as entertainers. So my take on it is I agree with both what you're saying, but um, I think that the, well, first of all, it has been going on, I would say forever. I think it's been going on since, because human nature, right? Like the, the job of a, of a journalist is to be, just to report the news, but you're innately going to already have a bias, whether you know it or not, right? Just your perspective is gonna affect what you do yeah. regardless, right? And uh, so you always had the big three, right? You had, like we mentioned, you had NBC, CBS, ABC, and that, you know, the legacy media. And they basically were the, uh, what's the word I'm looking, thinking of? Like the, I can't think of the word right now, but it's like the, like the, like the honor guard or the bodyguard of, I can't think of the word, right now, gatekeeper. gatekeepers. They were gatekeepers to information, right? Especially, you know, think pre-internet, right? They are gatekeepers to information, you know, outside of doing your own personal research in a library with books, they were like the gatekeepers of information, you know, daily news, political events, whatever event, right? And they, they owned it lock, stock and barrel. And then later on in the, you know, uh, late nineties, you did have cable step in there. Well, it was pro actually probably what, late, late, 80, late eighties, early nineties is when you essentially had Fox news and CNN come, you know, come, come into play. And they played their roles, right? And I don't say at first CNN did at least attempt to look like it was down the line, right? And Fox always skewed to the right. So that's how it gained its follow its, its, its following mainly because, like I was saying, naturally those legacy media and you know they kind of slanted to the left. I'm not saying they're a hardcore left, but they definitely slanted to a more culturally accepted left perspective. And they had Fox News that kind of blatantly came out in a more conservative approach and they gained their following. And then you had the internet and you had websites like Drudge Report and other things, breaking stories, and it kind of changed the landscape, right? But I think what's happened recently is now you have, and I would still throw in ABC, CBS, NBC, C, uh, CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News, where the difference now is they say, you know, you know, outside of the uh, straight up, you know, Sean Hannity's and Laura Ingram's and stuff like that, they, 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 they make the point, they make it sound like, oh, I am fair and objective and I'm only telling you down the line, but they're hiding the point that they're blatantly giving you one perspective, right? They hide it and they try and they think people are dumb enough to like, oh, this is, this is what it is. This is, this, this, this is the center, you know, viewpoint when really it's super skewed and on purpose, right? They basically defaced the term journalist. You know what I mean? There's plenty of examples we could go through on videos where it's reporters, like reporters giving these extremely opinionated, uh, you know, dialogue. And it's like, wait a minute. You would think if you didn't know anybody, like, oh, that must be like, you know, Sean Hanby type, maybe of the left or something, you know? And then it's like, no, that's just a reporter. And he's giving like a hardcore <laughs> opinion on anything. Like, especially with Trump, right? They're like, oh, there, there's, there's comments like, oh, it's the end of the world. You know, Trump did this or that or whatever. And it's like, okay, that's an opinion, and you're, but you're a reporter. You see what I'm saying? There's a difference. Well, you so remember what it was like in the newsroom when we were working at the, when we were working at News 13. The main stories did not come from local, we, like the, the so-called journalists that work with us did not get their stories from anywhere, but like a news desk that shipped down the main stories. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Usually we were sent out to the occasional fight or car accident. True. So that exactly. just tells it, you. It all story. comes down from on high. Yeah. All that information came from some other place. that said, this is what you'll be reporting today. And here's like some three filler spots. Find some area for that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You're 100% so correct. So there's no way you can inform a public properly if you are not do not have a, journalists who who have their the the public's a, ambitions at heart, not their ambitions, but their like the basics, the understandings of what right wrong right and wrong is and evil and good, and understanding that like hey this fluffer piece about how this kid uh, did a bake sale in front of his yard so he can earn money to uh, 
pay for his orphanage papers or shit like that is not a happy story. It's actually very depressing. <laughs> Or no, other but it would be a happy story. The media would love to cover it if he was fundraising for Joe Biden and he exactly. sent all that money. No, they did cover it. They did cover it. It was, and they portrayed it as a happy story. Like, look for this kid, good entrepreneurial oh, spirit. And and it's like, yeah. doesn't that mean that there's a system broken somewhere where this poor kid couldn't even afford to get a family because they couldn't afford to pay for the papers for him? Like, this is a right. up system. Yeah. No, but, and that's why I think it's funny that they, you know, to Trump, you know, they, they started this thing, you know, they, they, they call themselves the resistance, right? Well, you, when you control all the news, the media, and, and the word uh, each and every day, you control all business, you control all everything, you're not the resistance, you're the corporations in Wall Street are not resistance. I, I hate to tell you that no, they're no, not I resistance. Of course not. <laughs> they're in there to make money and that's what they're doing. And and that's 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 the bottom line is that's it's to me it's it's all about making money and what Matt uh, alluded to is the, the word comes down from on high. So oh, that's from their 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 board members or whoever it may be. It's not there is no uh, free press, not not on not on cable news anyway. And I think the reason they've got so, uh, I guess, for lack of better words, the way they are, is because of things like what we're doing: podcasts, YouTube, the rise of the internet. There are other ways to spread information now, and they really, really don't like that. Whatever they can on their platform. To get to get their uh, their message across to the people that, for some reason, still watch them. So one thing I want to talk about are solutions, and that's definitely part of the solution is the alternative means of giving out information, right? However, what is a solution to take on? And I have I'll give out an opinion, not necessarily my opinion, but an opinion that I've heard a solution to fix the situation because one of the primary issues that I've heard people relate to me is that the media and the press, they lie. They, they, they blatantly lie constantly all day, lie after lie, and that they're not held accountable for their lies, right? That they just totally get away with it. And even if they do make a correction later on, it's, you know, small, and it's quick and no one rebroadcasts it. You know, like they, they don't, the lies, the lies go on, right? There's so many of them out there from the last few years, you know, from like the Charlottesville lie about Trump, you know, he said, find people on both sides. If you listen to like 20 seconds more of the, the, the feed, he condemns white supremacists straight up, but they never mentioned that part. You know, just, that's just one example of like thousands we could probably list. So what I've heard, the opinion I've heard is that, you know, in those particular situations, why doesn't like Trump or whoever, since the, since they have to have that, since these, these entities have to have broadcast licenses and such, like, why don't they revoke their licenses and, you know, prevent them from broadcasting, you know, to the masses? Like I've heard that as a solution. What do you think about that solution? Uh, well, that would be a conflict of interest because they're, they're, bought and paid for they they make their money off of washington so and washington gets free exposure and gets their message out so why the heck would they ever agree to revoke the licenses of these people that'll i mean that's that's a great solution but uh there's too many too much money uh trading hands between those two parties to ever have that happen that's the same it's the argument of these the, the politicians saying oh yeah We've got to we've got to restrict uh, big tech, you know. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna section we're gonna get rid of section two thirty and no, you're not. You're making too much money. You're not gonna do it. And it's the yeah, same thing. Right? Yeah, it's all they're all making too much money for any of that to happen. That's a great solution, but that would take an awful lot of fairly honest people on both sides to make that happen. I don't disagree with you there. Do you have an opinion on that, Matt? Well, I think we 
journalists aren't the only ones that have a problem with accountability and being held accountable. I think just about everything in our society does. Not just people, but even things. Like if you look at like uh, certain things that are sold even to our military that end up being like later, like were you in the military between these dates and suffered this? Well, you probably used this thing that they gave to you because somebody in, in the government had a brother who worked for the company, so they gave you all these crappy things. Well, now most of you have head injuries, and if they were caused because of this thing, you can sue them through a class action lawsuit that'll give you a very small portion of what they earned and still have today because they were blocked off by, from being held responsible by a company that they made a name over. <laughs> so essentially like yeah how do you hold anyone accountable these days when you have people that are doing horrible things and are making tons of money off of it and we're like hey isn't this wrong by most standards most even religious or moral or amoral or belief standards isn't like pedophilia and molesting children wrong we're like yeah but these rich people were doing it and there's only a few of them so we can ignore that they're like no wait a minute no we're not going to say that's okay for just these few people and they're like, yeah, let's just go on to something else and forget about that. It's all like a smoke screen. Like whenever they're telling like the big Trump story, you look at like, well, what happened to Epstein? Or like, that's kind of coincidence that he killed himself during the only few minutes that the camera wasn't on and at his cell. Like what a coincidence. That all disappeared, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and yeah, but so you look at, they're just throwing like these big smart piles of smoke screen. So maybe, I don't even know, maybe Trump is the greatest actor in history and he had an exact line and plan of how this was supposed to go and this is how it's supposed to go and he was like yeah i was supposed it, we were we had said that we had to get rid of so much of the population and so we had this disease go about and i was supposed to tell them that they're supposed to follow the mask rule but i'm supposed to also tell them that they're not supposed to follow the mask rule because if because aaron you know entertainment that's what they tell you like yeah make this person cry but make them happy what <laughs> and you're like how do i do that <laughs> You're like, yeah, they make them cry to, sad tears, but they're going to be really happy about it. And you're like, That's because they want the audience to get, it's all about empathy and feelings. They want the viewer to feel like they, they have a connection to that story. And therefore, they want to they'll back them. in. Yeah. They want to make sure that they're not paying attention to what's really going on, because if they realized what the real situation was, then they would try to take action on their behalf. Yeah. So... You just remind me, I was, I was listening to another show and they brought up a, uh, a question. I, I want to I share the question because they they're not going as deep as I'm going to go with the question, but, um, you know, because you kind of brought up, you know, a couple things in there you just said, but w what about this, right? Um, you have, so you have the situation. It's going off topic a little bit, but I just, it's, it's more of a thought experiment, right? Um, and again, to be fair, I, I kind of did hear this on another show, but I want to expand on it. But the question is, or the situation is first, is you have the, um, you have, you have Trump, you have the economy is going well, right? Uh, the Democrats tried several attempts to take him out, you know, whether it was impeachment or spy game, you know, all these other things we can talk about later. And I remember in January, when, especially when he gave his uh, State of the Union speech, I was like, wow, he has like everything going for him. Like the economy's roaring, like, you know, like at least at face value, everything looks really good. And then you have, you know, the, and even at that time, there was already talk of, you know, COVID or, you know, they call the coronavirus back then in, in Wuhan. There's like talks, but he mentions it in his speech, actually, if you go back and listen to it. And then it kind of spirals and spirals and it essentially, you know, then you have March come March and it's lockdowns and, you know, you can see Trump's resistance to it, right? Because it's like, hey, we put a huge break, you know, slam the brakes on this economy, such and such. And we've talked about this before on the show where, you, you know, they weaponize a pandemic that, you know, and we could even discuss this in the future that one reason Trump may have lost was because they used Corona to basically scare enough people to vote against him, right? At least in terms of the response. And the whole time you had, and I know personally, like, and I, and I held these views too, of, but from a lot of conservatives, like, oh, you know, like, oh, they're, they're super hyping up this virus because they're trying to shut down the economy so that, you know, it makes Trump look bad. And we're talking about education. A lot of people don't understand that it's governors and mayors locking down economies, well, at least one half, governors and mayors locking down economies and jobs losing. And they're going to, they don't know, understand that's a local regional thing. So they're going to blame Trump. 
And then the other, the other half of that is, well, Trump didn't respond fast enough, so his mayors and governors are forced to do this, and such and such. And so basically, every conservative I knew, especially the older uh, boomer conservatives, right, were saying, hey, uh, you know, this is all BS. You know, Corona's being either, Corona's either a complete hoax or at least being super hyped, right, to make all this happen. And so I know a lot of, uh, you know, and I know a lot of conservatives in my life and a lot of older ones. I know Blake does. I'm not sure about you, Matt, but they definitely held these views strong to this day. And I'm not saying I don't, but here's, here's the thought experiment. What if it was Obama in power this whole time, right? And the coronavirus came and what if he was like, oh, and say he was up for re-election, say he just did one term. You know, and say the economy was doing relatively well, probably, probably would have never been as good as Trump's per se, but just say it was doing relatively well where you can say he has a roaring economy. And here comes a virus and he says, you know, because the thing is, we just talked about the press and they're so against Trump that they drove that narrative so hard, right? That he was screwing everything up. So now you have a press that's, uh, you know, bows down to the presidency, Obama. And so he says, it's not a big deal. Don't stop, don't shut down the economy, right? So now it would be, so think about it. Would the same conservatives now who say, oh, you know, it's just, it's just you know, it's been super hyped. Or, oh, this is a complete hoax. And oh, this is being used to take down the president and blah, 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 blah. Would they be making those same things or would they not be saying, oh, look at the president's making no big deal. People are dying and he's doing nothing about it. We need to be locking down these economies and, and everybody's getting sick and dying and they're just hiding it. Because in my opinion, I think that's what exactly would be. I think the same people, conservatives would probably, if it was the other way around, be screaming that, you know, how dare Obama not do anything to take care of oh, the situation. The, the, I could be wrong. Actual, I could be wrong. But I just feel like that. The actual the thing that you just the scenario the that you presented flu. actually happened with the swine flu. I don't know if you guys remember uh, back in those years when they had the uh, the swine flu epidemic uh, that was going on. It got pretty serious. Uh, obviously, uh, there weren't nearly as many uh, deaths worldwide or in the country, um, but the swine flu got pretty nasty and that was during the Obama years and the media basically announced that it was out there that, you know, uh, See, that I'll, they I'll were taking why. care of it. They didn't, they didn't hammer, you know, yeah, there were no shutdowns. There was no panic. Yeah. yeah it was a nasty, nasty uh, flu and, and virus going around, but there wasn't this, this, Hysteria is totally something that you could catch and die from, but there was no, no hype around it. That I it, want to oh, mention one difference though is look at the, the 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 overall situation though, right? When that happened, there wasn't this. That was early. One that was early on in his administration. Two, it wasn't what seven or eleven months, whatever. When let's see, March three, so what, seven months before an uh, election, all right? There wasn't a concerted effort for three and a half plus years of all these attempts of one side trying to take out the other. You know what I'm saying? If anything, the, the Republicans were so weak during that whole situation, just like they are anyways, right? And finally, they had their thing that they could punch Trump with, right? So what I'm saying is, if it was the other way around, with the, all those other things in place, would conservatives right now would be super hardcore like, oh my God, this is a real thing. We should be freaking out and locking stuff down. That's assuming I don't know. That, I don't know. I'm that's just, assuming that the, the that would that's assuming that the Republicans would have the press on their side, which no, it's not going to happen. No, 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 no. I'm saying the press would be on Obama's side no matter what. Right? On Obama's side, that's oh what yeah. I'm that's oh, that's what, what I. So my, my, that was my point was that when it was happening, it, I mean, they didn't even make make it a big deal in the first place it was a public health crisis but literally nobody heard about it but they see, covered but, for him but what i'm saying is when that happened with obama conservatives were not jumping out there saying hey this is serious and it wasn't this mass thing what, what i'm saying is and maybe you're saying no it's if this happened the other way around with this time with the situation that have preceded it and say it was just the other way around you know say it was fox news the whole time boom 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 
it would it would it be just like it was in 2009 or would it, would it be similar to now where it's just roles are, are swapped what, what's your take on it matt yeah, that's a good question um That's hard for me to say from this perspective. Like, I do agree that uh, most of the media does shift towards the left. Um, and basically, yeah, like the same eight people own every single channel and are buying every single form of media. So they're just going to switch it to how they want. Um, it just kind of reminds me of 1984, where they just start changing every word of everything every time they eliminated a person, they would go back and I mean, you can do that now with all pretty much all forms of media. And that, that's what I think is kind of scary. Like, no matter where we post this, there's a possibility that it might get taken down because these are saying that something that's not correct or true according to the guidelines that they specify. So, yeah, if there was an alternate at reality, what would it be like if uh, Obama got the coronavirus situation under his administration? In an election year, with, with all the stuff. In an election year, with it all on the line, yeah. Definitely seems like an interesting coincidence that it happened the way it did, but, but I, it's in, it, I find it interesting about like how people are still reacting to the pandemic right now. Like, I hear about the big cities and everything, but I'm out in the middle of nowhere, and um, people in this town still deny that it even exists or it's even a problem, which. I don't know. I've heard a lot of people being quarantined. Some people getting fairly sick. Some people getting very sick. Our hospital still seems to be okay. I haven't had to go to it. I haven't caught it yet. But yeah, I understand like how it's been blown kind of out of proportion. And I believe what I heard this uh, one guy say uh, that we shouldn't have told places to close down, but just told them what the threat and what would could happen and what was coming. And yeah, like I think this attack on small businesses all they're doing is to set up a world where once all these businesses close the big companies will come back in buy up all that land at discount and put in their their franchise shops so anybody who has that much money to afford a franchise because you won't be able to afford a, a, your own unique business or anything like that because all those people ran out of money a long time ago because there was no help for any of them but well i mean that's exactly this, this, right because i uh I was in a, a fairly large town today and the shopping mall, shopping mall, public place, completely packed with people everywhere. It's like couldn't find a parking spot. But then across the street, the mom and pop restaurant and the bar closed. So, you know, well, what Matt was saying, the, the, it's, it appears as long as, as Wall Street makes its bottom line, it's going to be all good for them. That's, and he's right. And I think uh, the more small businesses close, the more uh, big, big corporations can move in and, and make bigger shopping malls, make more Costco's, make more Sam's Club, what have you. I'm not trying to single those businesses out, obviously, just just examples. I, I, I totally believe that's what's going to happen or what they want to do anyway. So if you look at, I mean, it's kind of going in a different direction, but, um, and we could have, you know, a three hour show on this subject alone. But if you look at, uh, you know, in the last, what, eight, nine months, the biggest massive transfer of wealth from medium and small businesses to major corporations, you know, mega corporations has happened in the last seven, eight months. And there was another statistic I read, uh, I want to say it was in the last like three months or so, more small businesses have closed permanently than in the 2008 crisis, right? So, and also that we've had a massive transfer of power and rights from the individual and the citizen to the governments, right? Whether it be state, local, or federal. So again, we could speak on this for hours easily. And I wasn't necessarily trying to go in that direction, but it was more of a thought experiment of bouncing off what we were saying about the press. And, you know, would, would things be flipped if certain other entities were in power compared to what 
happened. Um, but yeah, I mean, in this situation, there's talk of the great reset, you know, and there's so many different uh, ways we go with this in terms of an unprecedented, you know, uh, seizure of, of rights and, and, and just control on the population. You know, what, what, where you fall out on masks. And one thing you can't deny is masks definitely have, you know, control definitely is, is there with, with masks. And, you know, when you're in a, um, I would argue, like you said, you know, you're in a, in a packed place in, in your small town or whatever, or larger town or whatever, you know, but you come to somewhere like California where then you're not, you go to LA, you're not even allowed to walk down the street right? It's, it's a lockdown. You're literally not allowed to go for a walk. Like the only way you can leave your house is to go to an essential business and back, you know, where, where they even banned outdoor dining, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, where, where they, they, they'll shut off your power if, and water if you're throwing a, a party at your house, you know what I'm saying? So it's definitely regional in that sense. And by regional, I, use, I mean like in blue one party Democrat, you know, controlled areas, and I know that in, you know, here in San Diego, it's not as strict as say LA and the, the Rhino mayor, he came out and said, you know, made a statement of resistance towards, you know, Gavin Newsom, AKA Mussolini. And the, and it's like, okay, cool. You're making a response, you know, but are you going to do anything about it? No. I mean, does he have the right to do it as a mayor? Probably not, but still if I was in a position of power, like even at, as a mayor, Granted, it's easy for me to say, but I would defy. And there's definitely uh, sheriffs here in California that, you know, around LA that have said that they will not be enforcing such measures. And, you know, I'd like to think if I was in a position of power like that, I would be saying the same thing. But again, we could talk about that for hours. So if you guys, I don't know if you guys have been uh, enjoying what you've been listening to. Hopefully we provided different perspectives on the issues we brought up. So just so you guys know, we have a lot of things lined up that we want to talk about, uh, different subject matters, everything from, you know, a vaccine mandated society, guns and firearms, uh, talk more about lockdowns, the state control, talk about anti-vaxxers or security theater, media control, mass racial equity, economic disparity, social media censorship, cancel culture. I'll name a couple more. There's a lot more we want to talk about. Obama versus Trump and, and the difference in their presidencies. And if there's anything, you know, our listeners, if there's any of you out there that you have a topic that you'd like us to touch on, let us know in the comments. Uh, and we'll be happy to take that in consideration moving forward. Absolutely. Uh, one way you can do that, again, we this there will be a version of this on YouTube. So please, again, like and subscribe. Hit the little notification bell. Please leave a comment with any ideas. Also, an email available if you want to email some stuff is uh, AaronBirdPodcast at gmail.com. You can send uh, comments or questions that way too. All right. Well, uh, thank you for listening. This is the Free Thought Doctrine.